My name is Saum. My Armenian name is Anush. Today I'm in the studio with Mona Shopa. Mona is a New York State licensed and nationally board certified acupuncturist. Mona, welcome to the show. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, um, I know a lot of people ask me how I became involved in acupuncture. So like many people who end up in the health and healing arts professions, for me, the inspiration came from my own journey to heal myself. From as early an age as 16 years old, I can recall suffering from a stiff neck, constantly cracking my neck. Yeah. It would tighten up again. Yeah. But like many people, I just ignored the symptom and went about my life. A decade later, at the age of 26, I found myself with a frozen neck, barely able to move it at all, sitting in the office of a neurosurgeon who was cheerfully explaining to me that he would perform surgery to, on my neck. He sent me home with this recommendation for surgery, and fortunately, he advised me to consult my parents. This was a great blessing, as I did discuss it with my parents, and my father had recently averted knee surgery on both his knees thanks to acupuncture. Even though my father was a man of science, not necessarily a believer in acupuncture at all at the time, he did try acupuncture as a way of avoiding surgery, and he was truly amazed. So when I presented with my neck issue, he suggested I go for acupuncture. That was the first time I ever tried acupuncture, and the results were really astounding. So this was a transformational moment for me, and I guess you can say it was my initiation um, into this vocation. Mm -hmm. Mona, for people out there who have never heard of acupuncture or who don't know what it is exactly, can you explain what it is? Sure. Um, acupuncture is a system of healing which helps to balance the flow of energy in the body through using uh, fine needles, which are very fine needles, which are inserted into the body at points along channels through which energy flows. This system of medicine has existed for well over 2,000 years and has its roots in ancient China and East Asia. In Chinese medicine, it's said that disease, many diseases arise when there is stagnation, when energy gets stuck. So through acupuncture, we are unblocking these areas of stagnation so that energy flows freely through the body. For example, if someone comes in with, say, osteoarthritis in their knees, swollen and painful knees, this may be due to stagnation of energy in the channels that flow through the knees. So acupuncture can help to restore circulation to that area. Um, when someone comes to you complaining of a particular condition, what do you do? Well, the first thing is, um, in order to come to a decision about how to approach treatment, I'll take a thorough medical history. And after that, I will look at their tongue, as the tongue is the only muscle in the body not covered in skin. So it really tells a lot. As Chinese medicine practitioners, one of the things we look at is the color of the tongue. Is it pale? Is it red? Is it purplish? For example, if someone's tongue has a purple issue, that may indicate that there's some blood stagnation in the person's body. We also, we also look at the shape of the tongue. If a person's tongue is swollen and has tooth marks along the sides, which we in Chinese medicine call a scallop tongue, that may indicate that the body's not metabolizing fluids properly. We also look at the coating on the tongue. If the coat is yellow, for example, that may indicate that there is heat in the body, which we might think about in biomedical terms as inflammation. If the coat is very thick, this may indicate that the organs involved in digestion are not functioning optimally. So there's this accumulation on the tongue. Another method of diagnosis that we use in Chinese medicine is checking the pulses at the radial artery. When we check the pulses, we're checking not only for the rate, is it rapid, is it slow, but also checking the quality of the pulses. Is it thin? Is it wide? Is it weak? Is it strong? Is it deep? Is it superficial? And what does it really feel like? What is the shape of the waveform when it hits your fingers? For example, if I were to feel what we in Chinese medicine call a slippery pulse, a pulse that feels like a pearl rolling smoothly, slipping away, this may indicate that a person has what we in Chinese medicine call dampness in the body. 
So what is dampness? This could be edema, this could be excess mucus production, for example, sinus congestion. This could be fluid accumulation in the joints. This could be a person just carrying extra weight on their body. This could be fibroids. These are just a few of the possibilities. A third method that we use to diagnose in Chinese medicine is palpation, which just means that I will touch with varying pressure different points and channels on the body to determine where there is tightness, where there may be what we call emptiness or weakness, where the person actually feels tender. After all that, I will plan a treatment strategy. For example, if a woman comes in complaining of irregular periods, if she feels tired and gets headaches after her period, if her tongue is, say, pale and dry, her pulses are thin and wiry, I may determine that she has a pattern of disharmony we in Chinese medicine call deficiency of liver blood. And, and perhaps she also has some stagnation of liver qi. In this case, my treatment strategy would be to build up the blood, promote the small of smooth flow of liver qi. So I would choose acupuncture points that have these functions to help rebalance the flow of qi or energy and blood in the liver channel. For example, there's a point on the top of the foot a couple of inches up from the webbing between the big toe and the second toe, and that point, known as liver three, is a major point on the body to regulate the energy of the liver to promote the flow of liver qi. So that might be one of the points I would choose for this woman. And in a single treatment, I might stimulate anywhere between nine and over 20 points on the body, depending on the person, depending on the condition they're coming in with. Another example may be a woman coming in with fatigue. If I look at her tongue and see it as pale, swollen, trembling, and her pulse is feeling weak, I would choose points on the body to tonify or to build up her energy. One of the most famous acupuncture points, stomach 36, or the Chinese name Tzu San Li, which means three more miles, actually indicating that stimulating this point can give a person the energy to go that additional three more miles, um, located about two inches below the knee, about an inch away from the shin bone, is a major point on the body to increase energy level and reduce fatigue. Yet another example would be a woman coming in with neck and back pain, very common. Based on palpation, I may find that she has stagnation of qi and blood in particular channels. In the case of neck and back pain, it may be in the tai yang channels, which are channels that pass through the back of the body approximately an inch and a half away from the spine and the other channel which runs through the shoulder blades through the upper back and neck so my treatment strategy would be to free up the flow of chi in those channels to remove the stagnation and I would also address any underlying imbalances that the woman had in her body based on what I found through an observation of her tongue and pulses. Do all acupuncturists treat in the same way? Actually, no. There are many different styles or approaches to acupuncture. <clears throat> There's what we call classical Chinese medicine or classical acupuncture. There's also what is known as five-element acupuncture. And then there is the most common and widespread uh, style, if we call it that, known as TCM, <clears throat> excuse me, or traditional Chinese medicine, which is a standardized form of Chinese medicine that was created during the Chinese Communist Revolution under the leadership of Mao. Prior to the communist uh, revolution, and actually, I should say, in the history of ancient China, there were many different schools of thought, and a great emphasis was placed on treating the spirit of the individual. And in the early 1950s, in an effort to present an alternative to the Western imperialist medicine, under the leadership of Mao, there was this effort to systematize, standardize Chinese medicine. And that's what actually gave birth to this thing that we call TCM, or traditional Chinese medicine. And, um, but unfortunately, the unfortunate aspect is that in the process of standardization, certain elements of the medicine that were practiced before were taken out as a way of simplifying it and bringing it to the masses, making it more accessible. So, um, Mona, you have a practice here in the city, and I understand that you see a lot of women of color and lower-income women in your practice. 
I do. What sorts of issues do you see women coming into your practice with? Well, as women ma do make up more than half the world, the issues they come in with are just as varied as the issues that exist in the world. But to name just a few, I'm seeing many women are coming in with chronic neck and back pain. This is very common. This is often due to working long hours, taking care of children, carrying heavy bags, either doing manual labor or sitting at a computer all day long. And of course, stress. It is literally a physical manifestation of this attempt to carry the weight of the world on one's shoulders, and it's often coupled with exhaustion, which is another complaint that many women come in with, which is fatigue, which is no surprise given the re tremendous responsibilities that so many women have to carry. Especially among single moms, I'm seeing chronic sleep deprivation, inadequate nourishment, just unrelenting fatigue, as they are putting themselves last on the priority list. I'm also seeing quite a few women coming in with anxiety and anxiety-related conditions, which is often linked to insomnia and just an overall feeling of not being at ease with life. And how can acupuncture help? In the case of anxiety, treatment with acupuncture can help calm the autonomic nervous system, which is that system that is responsible for the fight or flight response, where we're kind of on edge. Acupuncture can soothe that. And depending on the deeper cause of the anxiety, acupuncture may be able to tap into the channels that address the deeper issues. For example, if the anxiety is really rooted in fear, we may work with channels of the water element in Chinese medicine to address that fear. I'm also seeing quite a few women coming in complaining of depression. And even women who come in with a physical complaint, say shoulder pain, as their chief issue, also mention feeling depressed. And the good news is that most women report an upliftment of their mood after receiving acupuncture treatment. In fact, one of the nonspecific effects of acupuncture is the release of endorphins, the feel-good chemicals in the body. Tied to depression is the distressing number of women I'm seeing, especially young women, including self-proclaimed progressive-minded women who have serious body image issues, who are not able to accept themselves and their bodies for who and how they are, and who report varying degrees of eating disorders, which often end up resulting in seriously irregular digestion, seriously irregular menstrual cycles. And I found this not just in the stereotypical young white women, but also in women of color from various backgrounds. And how can acupuncture help women with eating disorders? On one level, uh, acupuncture can help to address the underlying imbalance leading to the eating disorder in the first place, so the addressing the emotional roots. Also, by regulating the whole digestive system, it can help to recreate a healthy relationship with food, working with appetite, digestion, Acupuncture can also help to reduce the constant inner dialogue of self-criticism and self-judgment that goes on, particularly when combined with yoga, meditation, and for many women, talk therapy is very helpful. I also see women coming in with a host of complaints related to the terrain of women's health. Menopausal hot flashes are something that acupuncture has been found to be extremely effective for, and I've found that in my own practice. I recently treated a woman, woman with hot flashes resulting from both menopause and from the use of chemotherapy for the treatment of breast cancer. And within just four to five treatments, she experienced a significant reduction in the hot flashes and a complete end to the accompanying anxiety that came along with the flashes. I also have women coming in complaining of painful periods, which Many of us just come to regard as normal and consider it quite normal to pop pills of Advil or Aleve every month, but it really doesn't have to be that way. With regular acupuncture treatment, especially when combined with a regular yoga practice, menstrual periods do not have to be painful. They do not have to be this big event every month. I've also seen women coming in with irregular periods, some due to just coming off the birth control pill, others due to polycystic ovarian syndrome, many different reasons. In treating um, these women of color, what other issues have come up in your practice? On the intake form I give to patients to fill out prior to their treatment, I ask if a patient has experienced any significant trauma in her life. 
and I've been very saddened and deeply disturbed to see the number of women reporting a history of sexual abuse, many of whom are now experiencing some form of post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of it. It may manifest in very obvious ways, such as insomnia, nightmares, inability to be in a healthy relationship, or in more subtle ways, such as the presence of low-grade anxiety and nervous habits. Many of these women have been through traditional talk therapy, which in some cases has been a huge help. Oftentimes, however, the body still holds on to the trauma, and this is where acupuncture can help, by releasing the trauma that is literally held in the cells of our body. As the neuroscientist and author of the book, Molecules of Emotion, also the book, Your Body is Your Subconscious Mind, Candace Pert discusses, even science now acknowledges that we do store emotions throughout our physical body, not just the brain. Through working with the body, we can affect the subconscious mind, and of course, vice versa. So acupuncture taps into those places in the body where the trauma may be held and helps to let them go or transforms that energy to something different so it no longer has the same grip on the woman as it once did. Well, I just want to say that I personally have um, gone to Mona for acupuncture treatments. And as an Armenian woman, I went um, and spent nine years as a volunteer in the war um, to help liberate Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh, from Azerbaijan. And after nine years, when I came back to the U.S., and I went to my doctor, my Western medicine doctor, you know, I told her that I was, you know, suffering from post-traumatic war syndrome. Uh, you know, I had seen just so many dead bodies without heads, ears, eyes, minds, you know, my friends being killed. Um, and, and she just said, well, do you want to see a counselor? And, you know, a lot of, you know, to me, there was like physical things that could have been done to my body, like acupuncture, which I didn't even know about. And so, um, you know, it, it just, every time I went to the Western uh, Medicine Clinic, you know, I had to wait a long time. It was very stressful. It was, um, you know, people were getting sick just waiting to see the doctor. And then when you saw the doctor, it was this, like, very short time, and it was very nerve-wracking because you couldn't, um, and, you know, give it the time you needed, and my insurance didn't pay for acupuncture, so I thought, oh, I can't afford it, I won't be able to go to it, and then somebody told me about Mona, um, how she's a very socially conscious woman. There's also clinics that you can go to in groups um, and get really af affordable care, and, you know, so I said, okay, I'll try Mona, and then when you go there, it's this very beautiful, calm room, and she spends an hour with you, and it's, it's like you're working together. You know, the, my, my wonderful Western medicine doctor, she, like, never touches you. She never asks you what parts of your body, you know, feel this way or that. They, they don't touch your body to discover where there's blockages or something, but with Mona, um, you know, you're, you're working together, and, and there's this feeling of discovery, you know, like, I... I discovered points on my body that are, you know, uh, tender and blocked up, and, and I didn't know that they were there. And then once you know that they're there, you can kind of, like, figure out how to unclog it. It's like plumbing, you know. There's, there's you, you, the acupuncture needles are like rotor reader going in there and unclogging. And personally, I never like getting shots, and I thought, ah, uh, needles. But these are, like, so fine that, you know, it's like, choo, choo. you can hardly feel them a lot. And so... Then when you're there, it's like when you're with a spiritual healer that you can trust and you feel is, is really, um, you know, uh, aware of the social conditions that have caused your illness and, you know, wants to um, make this ancient healing energy as accessible to everyone no matter what their income and, and that will work with you on this. This is, this is a blessing and a very beautiful thing. And also acupuncture is, is preventative. Even if you're not sick at all, it's good to go there and you know just um, build up your immune system to prevent you from getting sick. So um, Mona, I would like to ask you, um, how can people get in touch with you? Folks can read more about um, me and my practice on my website which is www.peopletreewellness.com. 
That's uh, www.peopleple, tree, T-R-E-E, W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S dot com, peopletreewellness.com. They could email me at mona, M-O-N-A, at peopletreewellness.com or call me at 917-834-2124. I'm happy to talk to folks about their health concerns to see if we can determine if acupuncture would be helpful. Okay, that phone number again is 917-834-2124. And I would like to thank you very much, Mona, for coming in. And now we're going to hear um, some more of that music by Shushila Rahman. And the name of the song is Mama Vater. Thank you. <laughs> 